The compression ratio of an ideal dual cycle is 14. A sub K is 14. Air is at 100 kPa and 300 K at the beginning of the compression process and at 2200 K at the end of the addition process. So that state one we have pressure of 100 kPa and a temperature of 300 Kelvin. We're also given our um, temperature at the end of the heat addition process. So that is state three. Heat transfer to the air takes place partly at constant volume and partly at constant pressure, and it amounts to 1520.4 kilojoules per kilogram. So our total heat addition is 1520.4 kilojoules per kilogram. Assuming variable specific heats for air determine the fraction of heat transferred at constant volume and the thermal efficiency of the cycle. So find heat addition at constant volume V in kilojoules per kilogram because there's no mass given. And also the thermal efficiency of the, t of the cycle in percent. So this is A and this is B. So to make our lives easier, we need to draw our PV and TS diagram. Should be a curve. And these two are straight lines. This is where the heat addition at constant volume occurs, and this one is the heat addition at constant pressure. And now for our TS diagram. This is state one. State two, this curves up into state X, goes to state three, goes down to state four, and curves downward to the first state again. So let's label these properly. Okay. This is the heat rejected. This is also the heat rejected. Okay, so what do we have here? QAV. In order to find QAV, it has the following formula specific heat of air at constant volume times the temperature difference which in this case or rather in this case it's tx minus t2 and uh this is this is assumed to be one this is specific heat of air at constant volume which is 0 0.718 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin and we do need to find our TX and T2 first so using our ideal gas laws our first clue would be our compression ratio which is V1 over V2 so this so this one over this one So process 1 to 2 is an isentropic process. So our entropy is constant, as denoted by a straight line here. So R sub K is equal to V1 over V2 is equal to T2 over T1. But only if it if this is raised to k minus one. So this is fourteen. T one is three hundred Kelvin. 
so we are able to find our t2. We can just ignore this. 14 is equal to, or rather 14 raised to k minus 1 is equal to t2 over t1. And t2 should return a value of 862.13 Kelvin. And we should be able to find our p2 as well. So uh, how do we do that using this relationship? So we know our t2, 862.13. T1 is 300 Kelvin, and P1 is 100 Kelvin, and K is simply equal to 1.4, and we should be able to find our P2, which is 4,023.4. Kilo pascals. So now we know our T2. We still need to find our Tx. Okay, let's see here. So process 2 to X is constant volume. Constant volume. So here is a bit of a roadblock because we don't know what our what our pressure ratio is. So we'll have to make an assumption based on what the book gave us. So according to the book, the maximum pressure ratio is also P is equal to 1.5. And using also P is equal to 1.5, that is equal to the final pressure over the initial pressure. P2 in this case is 4,023.28 kPa over here. So Px is equal to 6,034.92 kilo pascals. So next, using again the ideal gas law, if V is equal to C, then Px over P2 is equal to Tx over T2. Now we already have P2, we have Tx, we have T2. Should be able to find our Px. Or rather, sorry, sorry, let's go back here. We have our Px, we have our P2, and we have our T2. Should be able to find our Tx. So Px is 6,034.92 kPa. P2 is 4,023.28 kPa. And finally, 862.1342. So for Tx, we get a value of 1,903.2 Kelvin. So finally, we are able to find our heat addition at constant volume. Okay, so let's do that up here. QAB is equal to... The mass is assumed to be 1. Then our specific heat at constant volume for, for air. And uh, let's see here. 1293.2 minus T2, which is 862.13 Kelvin. And that should return a value of 3. 309.15 kilojoules per kilogram. That is our final answer for question A. Now we still need to find question B, which is the thermal efficiency of the cycle. And we know that the thermal efficiency of a cycle is given by the work 
net over the heat added, but we do not have enough information to determine W net or heat addition because we don't know how to find our heat rejected. So instead, we'll have to find we'll have to find it using the ugliest equation I've ever seen. So just bear with me here. Okay, that's it. So we have every variable here besides our uh, cutoff ratio. We still need to find what our cutoff ratio is, and that is given by, let's see, volume at the end of heat addition over volume uh, at the start of heat addition, which is Vx. Mm. Hopefully you're still with me, because even I'm struggling to find if I have done something wrong. Okay, it looks like everything is correct so far. So Vx, in order to find Vx, we have to use our favorite ideal gas law equation, which is P V is equal to M R T. Again, let's assume this is 1. So, we know that Px is 6034 point something, what is this, 92 kPa. And the gas constant of air is simply 0 0.287 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. And Tx is uh, down here, 1200. 93.2 Kelvin. And if you shift solve this in out in the uh, calculator, you should return a value of 0 0.0615 cubic meters per kilogram. So now we have Vx. V3, we still need to find our V3. Okay, so process x to 3, so that's this one here, our pressure is, is constant. And in order to find our specific volume, oh sorry, I forgot to mention, this should be specific volume because this is on a per kilogram basis. So specific volume, there we go. Uh, give it a Give it a nice little hat there. Okay, so if pressure is constant, we can use Charles' law. Uh, Charles' law. So that is simply specific volume over the temperature, and the specific volume over the temperature again. So notice we have Vx already, which is over here. Tx is, where is Tx? Over here. T3, T3, don't forget, is given. It's over here. Oh, that's 2,200 Kelvin. And if you shift solve this into the calculator, we get a value of 0 0.15694 um, uh, cubic meters per kilogram. And now we are able to find our cutoff ratio. <coughs> Finally, sorry, I'm starting to run out of breath here. <laughs> um, point one five six nine four over point zero six one five, and uh, if we put that in our calculator, it should return. A cutoff ratio of 2.55. And now we have everything we need to find our thermal efficiency. This is going to be a bit of a long one, so 
I have to make space down here. So E is equal to Okay, so if you look at our calculator, you already input this. So let's check if this is correct. 1.5, 2.5, 1.4, minus 1, 0.5 minus 1 plus k, rp, r sub c minus 1. Looks like everything is in place. And finally, we get a thermal efficiency of 57.72%. And that is our final answer for question B. I hope this helped. Uh, consider liking, subscribing, and supporting me on Patreon. But first, I should write this down. Answer is not guaranteed. To be correct. Because truthfully, I do not have access to the textbook's solution manual, but so far th these seem like reasonable answers. So keep that in mind. All right, that's it. Thanks and good luck.